Have you ever heard of Hamonga a Maui? Well, I have, and it's in Tonga, where the Honga Tonga eruption took place. And some of the most ancient artifacts on Earth still exist in a tropical region. Now, this massive trilithon, and it's a trilithon because it's consisting of two, three trill major megalithic stones, has been nicknamed the Stonehenge of the Pacific. And just like the Moai has a completely ludicrous story associated with it. And we'll get to that in a moment. These standing stones with a lintel on top on the island of Tonga, Tupa, Hamonga, a Maui, stands about 17 feet tall and 19 feet long. Each coral limestone slab weighs 30 to 40 tons. And because of its clear resemblance, it has been nicknamed Stonehenge of the Pacific. Now, the historical stories tell us a tale of nonsense. Archaeologists seem to believe that the Hamonga was built by an early 13th century king as a gateway to his royal palace, a complete fairy tale. Otherwise, it has been suggested it might have been used for astrological purposes. But if you set up a couple rocks, they line up with something. Now, don't they? Now, these theories are unconfirmed. However, and the origin of the huge trilithon remains a mystery. Or does it? And tonight, we're going to break it down like you've never seen it before. Hamonga, a Maui, sometimes referred to as the burden of Maui, is clearly leaning to the left. So it has been moving. Not, not so much, but... You can imagine through time the types of movements, such as the Great Sphinx of Egypt and the work of Robert Schock, where by a simple geologic analysis of the weathering patterns, he uncovered a startling fact that the Sphinx cannot be the age that they suggest due to the weathering rivulets and must be at least 8, 10,000, 12,000 years or more because there was no weathering and water running in this region for at least 8,000 years. So this weathering, this erosion, must have occurred after the Sphinx was erected and excavated. Placing the age of the Sphinx at an unprecedented eight to 12,000 years ago. Now, if we look at some of the historical pictures of Hamongamonga in Maui, Hamongamonga Maui, <laughs> And we also consider some important facts. Well, you're not going to be able to get it to here. But the Trilithon itself has been photographed for hundreds of years. And we have that data. But what met my fancy was the lentil. And the fact that if someone would take the time to move a 20-ton lentil up into 30-ton blocks they would have made a tight fit. And you can see here the lentil is leaning. And it is not just leaning in modern times or has been eroded, leaving a 10 centimeter gap. The same gap existed 200 years ago. There has been no change in the erosional pattern in 200 years. Yet they want you to believe that this is only 800 years old or so maybe even 700. But that couldn't be further from the truth. The people that built this made this lentil fit tight and it has since eroded. And even back in the 1800s, it had eroded 10 centimeters. Now, if we look at the rates of weathering of limestone from multiple sources like this one, we're going to get an average rate of about 1 20th of a centimeter every 100 years of dissolution in modern times, not in ancient times, and this is due to the acidification of rain. Limestone weathering rates have accelerated by micron scale grain detachment and acidic rain in modern times. And we can use this data, the measurements of weathering rates of stone structures to infer how long it took to weather this 10 centimeters of limestone. 
And if you just do the simple maths, 1 20th per 100 years, it takes 2,000 years to weather one centimeter of limestone in this tropical region. And if we're talking about 10 centimeters bigger than this man's head, that's 2,000 times 25.4. That means that this monolith could have been built up to 50,000 years ago and has since been sitting here and weathering. But that's based on modern weathering rates due to acid rain. So we could easily push this back to 75 or 100,000 years from present or even further because Mario Bildreps believes that this monolith was in place a long time ago. And I concur, based on the weathering patterns alone. There is no lentil, modern lentil, even in this region, in southwest Colorado, where the Pueblo lived. Most lentils are still in place. This one is clearly leaning and clearly weathered massively. The ancients that placed this lentil here would have not placed a small lentil in this perfectly cut hole. It would have fit tight like all megaliths, fit tight. But this one happens to be limestone, much different than granite or other megalithic structures that weather at a rate of a millimeter per million years. This one happens to be limestone that weathers a little quicker, just like the siltstone at the Sphinx. Yep, same type of rapid weathering that we can calculate a date from. Same one here. And this lentil was placed at a minimum of 50,000 years ago and probably much longer. And for that, well, we can just look at the historical pictures and see that there has been zero change in the weathering. Here we see one, two, three bumps on the top of the lentil. And here we see the same one, two, three bumps on the lentil. Here we see a widening gap at the bottom and a little chink up high. And this is the same picture from a different angle with very little change in 200 years. And there's a reason for that. The reason this lentil is leaning is because it's been weathering for tens of thousands of years, even with an increased rate in the last few hundred years with acid rain. We're using science to view this for the first time. Very few people even know about this object. And just like the work of Robert Schock, it is clear due to weathering evidence and statistics that this monolith, this megalith, was built 50 to 70,000 years ago. Well, and that is spectacular. In just a few days, I was able to research this object and come up with a conclusion that is hard to deny. No megalithic culture would have fit a loose lentil inside of megalithic vertical arms. This is a weathering pattern that is calculable, just like the Sphinx, right in your face. And any undergraduate or master's student could simply report on this as a thesis but there's no funding available because it does not fit in the mainstream narrative. Just like we don't. And that's a boom to knowledge right in your face. What a disgrace mainstream science is when an independent researcher can just pick a megalithic structure and make a breakthrough in a week. I don't know if anyone else has put these pieces together, but there are thousands of other structures similar to this where we can look at weathering patterns of granite, andesite, tuff, or whatever material they're being built from and make a deduction that the current narrative that this was built 800 years ago is a complete fantasy. Because based on weathering rates, the most recent time it was built was 40, 50,000 years ago and has been sitting here ever since, untouched by humans, well, touched by humans. 
but not destroyed. And that is a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning and prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where mainstream science is dead. And if you have a few idle hours, you could probably uncover some amazing things. Welcome to Magnetic Reversal News and the boom you need to know.